God's plan was to send Jesus Christ. The most important part of God's plan was Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. So when Jesus was on earth, he traveled all over Israel, performing miracles and teaching people about God. Now, Jesus spent, check this out, Jesus spent a lot of time teaching people about God's kingdom. So last Sunday, if you were here, we talked about God's kingdom. Hmm, what is a kingdom? A kingdom is a country ruled by a king. That's right, that's right, everybody say king. So check this out, get this. You and I are Americans. We're a part of the United States of America, right? Is, is, that, is that true? Are we? Yes. Now, this is our earthly country. This is our earthly country. Now, what happens when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart is you become a part of God's kingdom. Everybody say God's kingdom. God's kingdom. So what that means is spiritually, spiritually, you're a part of a new country now. And that's God's kingdom. So we learned last week that God's growing kingdom is more valuable than anything. I'm going to say that again because this is one of the most important things that you could ever know as a kid. You do not need to wait till you're an adult to know this. You need to know it now and receive it. God's growing kingdom is more valuable than anything. More important than the grades you make at school, more important than how popular you are, more important than any sport imaginable, more important than any video game, this is the most important thing in your life and in my life. So when you accept Jesus Christ in your heart, God's kingdom comes to live inside of you. One of the things we're talking about with God's kingdom is that the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. And now that needs to be growing. So we need to let that grow by praying to God, loving God, loving others, being kind, being in God's word, coming to church, being around other believers. When we do that, the kingdom of God inside of us spiritually grows. So that's a part of it about a growing kingdom. Here's the other part about a growing kingdom. It can also grow physically. And the way that it grows physically is that you and I tell other people about Jesus Christ they hear the good news of Jesus, the Holy Spirit stirs in their hearts to receive Christ, and then they become a Christian. So Jesus also spent time explaining what God is like and how he loves. And that's what we're going to focus on today. See, last week we talked about the kingdom of God. But today we're going to talk about how God loves. We're going to talk about three parables. And, and a parable is stories with a deeper meaning. And Jesus would tell parables and he would tell these stories and they had these super deep meanings. And so in these parables today, we're going to see how much God loves you and me, but especially lost people. Lost people. A lost person is someone who does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. A lost person is a person who is not saved. Okay? But we're going to find out that God loves lost people. See, when we become church people and Christians and everything, we start to think, oh, those lost people, oh, they're a mess. They're all, they sin all the time. And all that. No, that shouldn't be right too, because we were lost ones, right? We should love lost people as much as God loves lost people. And you don't have to take my word for it. We can learn from Jesus. Tax collectors and sinners came to listen to Jesus teach. The religious leaders complained because Jesus welcomed sinners. So Jesus told them three parables to teach them about God. Jesus said, if a man has 100 sheep and loses one, what does he do? He leaves the 99 sheep and searches for the lost sheep until he finds it. Then he tells his friends and neighbors, let's celebrate, I found my lost sheep. In heaven, there is more joy when one sinner repents and turns back to God than for 99 people who did not wander off. Jesus also said, if a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one of them, what does she do? She lights a lamp, sweeps the house and searches carefully until she finds it. Then she tells her friends and neighbors, let's celebrate, I found my lost coin. 
Then Jesus repeated, In heaven, there is joy when one sinner repents and turns back to God. Jesus told a third story. A man had two sons. The younger son said, Father, give me my inheritance today. So the father gave his son his share. The younger son left home. He wasted his money and lived foolishly. There was a famine and the people in that country did not have enough food. The son got a job feeding pigs. He was so hungry, even the pigs' food looked tasty. The younger son made a plan. He would go back to his father and admit he was wrong. He would ask to work for his father like the servants. So the younger son headed home. He was still a long way away when his father saw him coming. His father ran to him, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son began to apologize. I have sinned against God and against you, he said. But the father told his servants, Let's celebrate with a feast. Bring the best robe and put it on my son. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. This son of mine was lost, and now he is found. At this time, the older son came from the fields and heard music at the house. What's going on? He asked one of the servants. Your brother is here, the servant said. Your father is celebrating. The older brother was angry. He refused to go to the feast. The father asked him to come inside. The older brother said, I never disobeyed you, but you never threw a party for me. Son, the father said, everything I have is yours. We have to celebrate. Your brother was lost, but now he is found. Jesus told stories about people who were looking for things that were lost. Jesus told these stories to teach about himself. Jesus looks for people who are lost, people who do not know him. Jesus gave his life to save people from sin. How many of you ever taken a selfie? You've been in a selfie before. You know, you know the selfies where you take the phone and you take a picture and you're in the picture and hi and hi and hi, you know. All right, so God, the Father, can't take a selfie. If we saw God the Father, you know what happened to us? We would die. Dun, dun, dun. All right, now here's the deal. Jesus is God the Father's selfie. So anything you learn about Jesus You're learning about God the Father and how he works. So what we're learning is that Jesus and God the Father and the Holy Spirit came to seek and save the lost. Now the lost are any people who do not have a personal relationship with who? With Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. He loves all people. Those who are Christians and those who are lost. He wants the lost to find Jesus to be saved. I understand how the big bro feels because he was the one doing everything that was right. And then this little brother, he messes everything up and then we're going to we're gonna celebrate him. And, and what Jesus is teaching us is that like God is after the lost. He's after the broken. Now, he didn't say, now, ben, now my oldest son, I don't love you. But he, what, he was, what he was telling to his oldest son is that I love you. I've always loved you. Everything that's mine is yours. You have me every day. You're here. Your little brother was lost and away, and now he's back. This story was actually told to the Pharisees and the scribes. These are the religious people. These are the people that have it all figured out, and they obey, and they are better than all the rest of you lost heathens. Right? Now, Jesus was telling the story to them. Now, a lot of people, you're going to hear the story for for years and years to come. And a lot of people will mainly just focus on the younger brother who runs away. The story really, really isn't about him. The story is about the big brother who acted the way he did. 
We know that because Jesus was telling the Pharisees this. And he's saying, you guys are like the big brother. You guys are so mad at me. Jesus was thinking, you guys are so mad at me because I'm going after the lost. And then I'm spending time with people that are what you call filthy people that are tax collectors. And they're, they're, they're just sinful people. You, you're like mad at me for that because I'm spending more time with them than with you. And when he was trying to get through to them is, guys, everybody sins. I want you to say that. Everybody's a sinner. Everybody's a sinner. And even though you may sin more than somebody else, God loves you the same. That's good news for us. Because even as a Christian, if you have a bad day and you like sin, like it's just a rough day where you can say, man, I messed up a bunch. God's love for you doesn't lessen. And then on those days where you're like, man, you're doing pretty good. You're obeying and you're doing what you should. And man, okay, I don't even know if I sin today. God doesn't love you anymore. He loves you just the way you are forever. It doesn't ever lessen. It doesn't get smaller, his love for you. And it doesn't grow any bigger. And so what Jesus is trying to get these religious people to understand, it's like, look, man, God loves you, religious people. He also loves the lost. And my job is to go after the lost. Again, maybe the religious people, maybe they did sin less than the tax collectors and all the other people. But sin is sin. Think about this. Two guys are going to the airport. All right. They're going to the airport. They're going to Atlanta. They're going to fly out of Atlanta, and they're going to fly to Orlando. The plane takes off at 8.30 on the dot. There is no other flights after. This is it. 8.30 in the morning, the plane takes off. These two guys get up that morning. They rush to the airport, right? They're trying to get there as fast as they can. So the first guy gets there, and what time does the plane take off? 8.30, he gets here at 8.31. He missed the flight. The door's closed. And so he sits down in the seat by the gate. and his, he, He's just in despair. He's just miserable. An hour later, the second guy shows up. He's running. He's trying to get there. It's gone. They both missed the flight. Who's better off? Is the guy who was almost on time any better than the guy who was an hour behind? No. No. And that's what Jesus is trying to get through to us. Doesn't matter how much you sin, sin is sin, and sin separates us from the one true God. And Jesus is saying that I am after everyone who is lost. And I want them to be forgiven for their sins. And here's the cool thing. Imagine this. Jesus is like, you know, these two guys are in despair, and here comes Jesus flying to the airport in his fancy plane. And he pulls up and he says, hey guys, I know you're both late, right? I don't care how much you were late or you were late, but you're both late. You missed your flight. Do you trust me as your pilot? You do? Okay, good. And come on board. I forgive you of your tardiness. I'm going to put you in first class. I'm going to give you everything you need. I'm going to take care of you. We're going to get to where you need to go, and we are going to celebrate the entire way. That's what Jesus does. And that's what he's trying to get through to them with these parables, is that he's after the lost.